welcome back to the morning show here on the Raj News. Well, joining us now to talk about the Niger Football Federation's wins and losses in 2018 is Amadou Pinnick, the president of the Federation and first vice president of the Confederation of African Football, CAF. Welcome to the morning show. Thank Great you. to have yeah. you. Good morning. Yeah, thank Let you me so much for having begin me. by asking you, um, just after your election, and I'm going to quote what you said, you said you had, uh, in four years, we have gone through rough and turbulent times, sleepless nights. Well, are you having better nights now, sleeping? Well, I, I don't know how to address that, but uh, Nigerian football is tough and it's always a tortuous journey because of the excitement it generates to Nigerians. You know, so you don't have sleepless nights. You know, once you are the hem of affairs in Nigerian football, you should know that uh, you always be faced with the good, bad, and ugly at every point in time. So I, I would say that uh, it's something that because I'm passion driven, so also members of my executive committee, we are passion driven. And once you are passion driven about anything, you don't want to fail, and that's the truth. And what is passion? You know, passion, of course, is the psychological world within yourself to succeed, and that is exactly what we are trying to do. Congratulations on the victory for the ninth time of our Super Falcons with the Outcome Games. Can we discuss what it's going to take for them to build on that African dominance and go global and win the World Cup? Yeah, that, we, we, we are truly working on that because we feel that we've dominated Africa and uh, we need to go beyond that right now. At least under my watch, we've been able to win this trophy three times, you know, and um, it's not that easy anymore in Africa. It's not that easy as it used to be in the past because full female football in Africa have come of age and um, all the other African countries, they buckled up, you know. But we just need to go the extra mile and the first thing we did was bring in a very solid technical crew to the team, you know. Uh, which of course has a global presence. You know, we have Thomas, the coach, who from was a former, yeah, from Sweden. He's a world-class coach. Everybody knows him, and um, he's been able to bring in something new to the team. You know, and um, that's working step ahead of what we're doing, and also giving the girls similar treatment to give to the Super Eagles. You know, thanks to the governor of Lagos State, Ambadi, who gave us a warm, beautiful camp for them to stay in to them and now not a dime is being owed to them. So they are very happy. We're, and now we've also looked at going to the World Cup. They have only two FIFA windows available, the one in January and the one in April. Now instead of playing only two games, I've decided to take them into two tournaments. The one in China, they are going to confront Canada, Korea and China. These are very tough female sides. You know, then after they come back, they go back to their clubs, then they'll come again and go to Cyprus, where they are going to meet about seven teams, you know. So they're going to be playing the total of about between eight to ten matches for the World Cup. That will give them an appreciable level of preparation. All right, okay, um, going to the World let Cup. me just throw this one in here. Um, because um, when you see all the records you've actually achieved, some people have almost started here as the line of mercy of Nigerian Football Administration. Of course, they say that you're the first Nigerian to commission six matches at the World Cup unprecedented. First uh, Nigerian to become, the first Nigerian to become the president of the CAF Organizing Committee, or a member of the FIFA Organizing Committee. You've raised billions for Nigerian football like never before. And you say you're still targeting 5.5. You've got ITO, Nigeria Bureaus, Coca-Cola, TVS, TGI, to name but a few. Super Rugby's jersey has been touted as one of the best-selling jerseys in the year 2018. We could go on and on. But people still, some people will still look back and still doubt your credibility and your ability to channel and also lead Nigeria football <clears throat> to the next level. How do you feel, after achieving all this, that people still question your ability to still lead Nigeria? No, it's, it's normal, you know. It's normal. Jesus Christ was a saint, but people still wanted him dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that's the truth. It's normal. When you're in leadership, you should brace up for everything. And that's the truth. And I, I don't believe we've gotten to where we want to get to, you know. Coming in four and a half years ago, I, I've always advocated private sector-driven economy. You know, football 
is a big business. You know, we look at the football economy, look at the sports ecosystem of Nigeria, and how we can build football into it. And that has been my dream, because football can feed. You see, Nigeria is getting a lot of money from oil. No doubt. But we believe football can be an integral part of the economy. And that's what we are tilting to, you know. Our plans, of course, is we have what's called the QIPs, the Quick Impact Program, mm -hmm. which means we need to nurture the team that we are right now. We need to do our VIP scouting. We need to keep them. Then we have the medium term. And, of course, we have the long term, which can be very ambitious, you know. So all those are plans, if you are in leadership, you should be able to know the reason why you are there and evolve plans or develop plans that can bring about sustainable football development. And that's what we do. So when you do things like that, yeah. you'll be kicking against people. You'll be stepping on toes because people do not want to change. People do not want things. They just want things to be done the normal way. We don't, you don't run football by just say gambling. When I mean gambling, this is normal way. Yeah. You look at what on the pitch, your sporting success can get, give you off the pitch. All those are the things that we are looking at. So it's not everybody that is happy with it, because you're introducing something new, something novel, and doing that, you're taking from this and adding to this. You're taking from this and adding to this. So people will come at you from all fronts. All right, but the truth is, we are resilient, we are yeah. prayerful, and we believe we'll get it. Yeah, a little follow-up to that question. Of course, um, you're not the biggest fan of the Minister of Youth and Sports, Barista Solomon Salkab Dalong. Just yesterday, he was being quoted saying that the reason why he stopped the funds for Nigerian football to actually, I mean, to actually prosecute African marches and some other major tournaments is because the 1.2 billion that was given to you by the by the federal government for the World Cup has not been accounted for. How has it been trying to manage Nigerian football, knowing that you've always had to look over your shoulder and always had to try to win over the Minister of Youth and Sports? You seem to always be a log ahead. How do you manage all this? And, sec and also talking about, since we mentioned finances, even though you have Price House Cooper, um, Price House, Price House, PWC. One, yeah, yeah, PWC almost for short, all right, you still, it, the minister is still saying that you guys have not been able to account for those funds, so he's going to hold XYZ funds to actually prosecute football in Nigeria. Yeah, like I said, I'm not going to join words with the Honorable Minister. Um, he knows, he knows, the Honorable Minister knows that we are very transparent in all our dealings. And um, I want to believe, with all due respect to him, that he was very busy with the National Sports Festival. Meanwhile, congratulations to him for a very successful National Sports Festival. Um, we had submitted our retirement and, um, to him a couple of weeks ago. And he knows that that is not in me. He, he, I mean, the Honorable Minister one-on-one -on -one will tell you that's not that kind of you know, behavior in terms of being um, not being transparent it up because that is the key to football. If you are not transparent, you won't cut the Nigerian corporates. You, they can't. They can't come to you. That's it. So you really have a without, I don't have this. Like I said, is the boss. The office of the minister is an institution that we must respect at every point in time, and that's the truth. So, like I said, I don't want to join what's with him, but I'm happy to say that we are quite transparent, quite diligent with funding. Now we have financial derivatives as our financial consultant for the past five years, and everything we do it goes to him. Then go to our, our, our you can't have a better audi uh, auditors like than PwC. You know they're number number two in the world. You know, and um, we've just renewed their contract, even giving them more uh, portfolios. Now they're going to be coming as a management consultant, not just an audit firm. So that we'll look at the managerial, we'll look at other areas that we feel that we are inadequate, that they can also advise. So we are taking it to a level people do not comprehend. And only yesterday we published, for the first time in Nigeria, our account in major dailies. Yeah. They are still going to be in dailies today, they're going to be in dailies next week. So people can look at it and critique where necessary. So ours is not just to say that, you know, when people say all those things, I just laugh. Here is the president of the Nigerian Board Federation that does not have an official car from NFF. Here is the president of the Nigerian Board Federation that does not have official accommodation in Abuja. Yet I go to Abuja, I have never asked NFF for accommodation. You know, I've never asked NFF to fuel my car in Abuja. So when, so when you say things like that, it makes me, I don't like saying this, but that's the truth. But everybody should know that the current leadership in Nigerian Football Federation is not about me. 
Talk about Sheyaki, Umeshe, Udiko, Ibrahim, and Co. We are driven by passion. We believe football can impact on the economy, not just the sporting successes. Here, we've recorded a couple of successes. We've been able to place Nigeria in the global map, not just about me being the first Nigerian. Justice Phillips is also the first Nigerian, and indeed the only African representative in the highly revived FIFA ITs committee. She's from Nigeria. A.U. Mustafa is the president of the CAF Appeals Board. That's the strongest committee in CAF. Mm -hmm. He can sit there and get me out of office. He's a Nigerian. For CAF and FIFA to recognize our strength and give us these two positions, you should know that Nigeria is a great country. Okay, let's, let's go back to developing the Nigerian football economy, which is one of your promises in your re-election bid uh, in September. Critics will say you cannot just talk about developing a uh, football economy when there's no clear-cut plan. And if you do say you have a plan, you cannot talk about a plan with the current state of the local league in Nigeria. Yeah, like that's what I said. Our plans are short, medium, and long-term. The QIPs are, you know, the QIPs are what you have right there. You have to sustain it. You have to consolidate. You have to build on it. Then the middle plan, you, you know, you take it the, to the next level. Then the long-term plans are the things that you are going to be talking about now. And what is that? We are, we are in talk with GTI already, where they are going to come out with, um, uh, I think they're coming out with a unit trust. It's a sec registered entity, subscribed to the public. And every fund gotten from that arrangement, in the next few weeks, we are going to be unveiling that to the world. We are going to put into sports infrastructure. That's the first step is medium and long term. Sports infrastructure is decaying in Nigeria because you, as beautiful as you look, Thank you me. want to go to the stadium to watch football. Mm -hmm. You want to go to the stadium with your kids while they're in the nursery, you are watching, they are, you are fixing your air. We want to make every stadium a destination. It's quite ambitious, but it was done in England 20 years ago when the British government said, oh, what do we need to do? They went and they took a loan of about 200 million pounds to, to 1991 given to the clubs, not to pay their players, but to develop their infrastructure. Now, after developing their infrastructure, today they rake in about three billion pounds as taxes, direct and indirect, to the British government. You know, because of what they've been able to develop. And all the clubs started taking it from there. Then Ivory was developed, but now they've moved to Hashbutton, which you call Emirates. So look at Tottenham building a new stadium from White Hart Lane to a bigger White Hart Lane. You know, so that is it. You should be able to develop your infrastructure. And that is our, pro that's our projection. You know, when we develop the infrastructure, we know A to Z. That will come up with plans for the clubs. So we're in a system where we want this sector to work. We're in a system where we believe, like in the next four years. Mm -hmm. After four years, I'm saying it here and here, I'm not running again in Nigerian football. I have a beautiful family, a beautiful wife like you guys, beautiful kids. Let me go and be a family man. Since you, mentioned, since you mentioned your wife, let me just throw this on you, because I think you may football. I was going to have a follow-up to that, because yes. really, you know, I mean, you have these lofty plans, but they will say, the local league, is this so is unsellable? Is what same, is wrong is the with same, the local there's league? Nothing, let's say, listen, when you say local league, I don't want to call it local league. It's our league. We the love Nigerian it. League. The Nigerian league. Yes. If you say local, it's local. Oh, well, it's not Nigerian local. League. It's our league. Yes. We love what we say. Now, if you look at what has been happening in the leagues globally, in those days there was no TV. Your dad possibly used to go, I don't know, where are you from? I'm Nigerian. Where in Nigeria are you from? Edo State. <laughs> now, there were five clubs in Edo State. Mm -hmm. There was insurance. There was Bende United. Exactly. There was Flash Flamingos. There was NNB and um, one other club in Benin alone. Mm -hmm. They worried there was a spectorate, NNPC. Within that confine of Bendel, there were five clubs. Then there was no TV. I was a supporter of NNPC. Okay. So I used to go to the stadium. But now, instead of going to a stadium where you are not sure of 100% security, where you are not sure of 100% officiating, what do you do? You sit at home and watch us now. You're not a comfort at home. So part of our quick impact is to make sure we have our referees get the relevant and requisite training and make sure they are devoid of any form of match fixing. Our security in our stadium is quick impact. Crowd control. Crowd control, all those things that we need to do. 
while we work in the future to develop the infrastructure. So those are some of the things that we're doing. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. It's not just a one-off thing. Mm -hmm. We're also trying to bring TV, because this, the essence of to, dev, to, 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 to double or treble what we are doing with the TV rights, working with the National Sports Commission, uh, National um, Communications Commission, in ensuring the past was called a code, the NBC code, mm -hmm. whereby everything shown on football, about football, Certain percentage will be given for our league. So we are working on so many other things, ways in bring, raising funds for our league. Because truly and really, we want to develop the infrastructure. We believe it can do a lot for Nigeria. It's something that, he, that, that like that's why I said that, okay, you, you reeled out a lot of things that we've been able to achieve. But trust me, we are not have gone to our dream, our vision of repositioning Nigeria. All right, um, we wanted to, let's touch on women football. Because right now, Nigeria actually boasts of having the most successful national team, national team, our uh, female team, talking about no, Super Bowl. national male and female Male and female, we have the most successful in Africa, on the continent of Africa. But yet, the females still complain that they do not get their due respect as being the most successful national team in Africa. No, I don't, I don't want you to, I don't, I don't want us to go there. That was in the past. You saw us dancing Shaku Shaku yesterday. Yes, I did. Yes, I <laughs> so did. we, we so have. So tell us, we what, have... Are you, what are you packaging for? Because they said that the men, the national team, usually before, this, um, the, it was a case of going to the World Cup and always complaining of phones. You've been able to turn that particular face right now. For the first time in Nigeria football, we, are, we went to the World Cup, nobody talked about phones. For the females, as they're going to the World Cup in France next year in June, will the ladies have the cause to smile? Like the guys have smiled because we, we, in this era of equality, the ladies are also claiming that they I just should get paid. As I just told you that we are giving them, we had an opportunity of doing just two matches. Yes. But because we believe they can make an impact, we believe they deserve some level of respect. That's why we are going to give them this book. It's very expensive doing, going to China for four, three games, then going to Cyprus. Would have just said, okay, you know, I was talking to the president of the Swedish FA, my friend. They are going to play South Africa. They were meant, if we were not going for this tournament, I'm sure Sweden would have been coming to Nigeria to play. Uh -huh. Yeah, then before going, but that was a one off game. So we don't want a one off, we want a game that people can look at the number of players, especially the young players. Our guests are aging, you know, no doubt, but we have to build a team around the, the generationist, the next generation of girls coming. So, and beyond that, like I also told you, the same camp we use for the Super Eagles in Austria, we are in talk by today, tomorrow, we'll have concluded with them. In the same camp, we are keeping the Super Falcons before going to France. How about remuneration? Is, listen, we are working that out, and we're going to do, listen, they will tell you that we are not owing them any dime. We made a promise that if they won that championship, we we're going to give them $10,000 each. That we kept, without recourse to any funding from any other place. We did that. We are making a lot of sacrifice. Is even impacting on other of our programs. But we believe our prime property, property number one is the Super Eagles. Number two is the Super Falcons. Sorry, ladies, but the men rule. I'm not saying women drool, <laughs> but men always rule. And that's, you cannot, there's no basis of comparison. That's the truth, globally. Even though we want to play the thing of equality, I want to say, for example, if you look at Messi's contract, give me the biggest footballer, female footballer in the world. So Martha. Yeah, so, so Martha. So what's the, what's the own contract? So the truth is, but our own, we're not even looking at that. We're looking at appreciating our girls for what they've been able to achieve over time. They are the best football team, the biggest for, in terms of national team yes. in the world. Germany won the European Championship female for eight times. America won the CONCACAF one that is in the region of the Americas eight times. These girls have gone beyond them now. So they are number one in the world and they should be so recognized. And it's for that reason that we've given them all the recognition, all the respect, excuse me, and even Aliko came and gave them 50 million, Boa, 25 million, and I know a lot of people, a couple of people have called. Femi, my friend called, I was going to do something huge for them as well. So Nigerians, not just the Federation, Nigerians are beginning to appreciate what these girls have been able to achieve. You see, if you look at it, we are talking about the girls, the whole world is watching us, on CNN, they were talking about the girls. That's good public relations for Nigeria. 
is positive. Our uh, is being sold out and in good public relations for Nigeria. You don't pay for it. So football, beyond giving these girls, these guys, life, taking them off the streets, off the creeks, is good and a very potent tool for public relations for Nigeria. And we are very watchful. We, are very, we, 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 we love that. But beyond that, I also want to thank the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Buhari. To me, he has done, he's been exceptional in terms of supporting us. And also beyond that, he came at the time to intervene when there was a major crisis. Nigeria was about to be banned just two hours, and he directed that the status quo should be maintained. Let me tell you what that single Latin did. One, look at Sierra Leone today. They were second in their group. They didn't call it. They, they were banned by FIFA because of crisis internal. If Nigeria was banned, we're going to be losing all the businesses of going to the AFCON. We were bottom on, the, on, on, on our log. Today we are top with a game to spare. We have qualified for the Nations Cup. The girls would have been banned. Today they won the AFCON. Our beat soccer team, they qualified to go to Paraguay. Our under 17 team, they qualified to go to Tanzania. Our under 20 team, they qualified. So when I look at it, I'm not being emotional about it. But that is the reality, and that's the truth. And that's why I will say a big thank you to Mr. President. Apart from the role that football plays in PR, which you just highlighted, it plays a huge role in youth development and youth employment. We've all heard the appalling statistics of unemployment in Nigeria. What role does the NFF play in identifying and nurturing talent? Yeah, you see, all we're trying to do, because if you look at the British model, direct jobs alone, after they've been recapitalized, you know, funded, like they loaned that 807,000 people have been employed within the English football space. Now, the only thing that we can do to achieve that is to develop, I say again, our infrastructure. Develop our infrastructure. When you develop stadium stewards, stadium this, stadium that, there are various areas where people need to be manned strategically during and before, during, and after a football game. And like I told you, making football an integral part of the economy is also our vision. All right, 2019, you've spoken about all the greatness of 2018, and you say the best is yet to come. What should we expect from football in 2019? Yeah, if we continue in this momentum, I believe um, we're going to bring back the Nations Cup. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 are, we, are, we are looking at, um, we are, we, are, we, are, we are working religiously, prayerfully, <laughs> and assiduously you keep towards. Prayer, I'm, I'm a child of God. Listen, listen, I'm a child of God. Without prayers, I can't be here, you know. I mean, God has been so wonderful in my life. So I always, when I wake up in the morning, as a football administrator, the first thing I say to God, forgive me for all my sins. <laughs> and I forgive everybody. So I don't like, and that's the truth. So truly and really, I, I do that every morning. Otherwise, I'll get upset with everybody every day. Yeah. So but I forgive them as I come into his studio, as I wake up in the morning, I've forgiven everybody. So everybody, please forgive me if, I feel, if you feel offended. So you're talking about 2019. So you said, uh, yeah, like yes. I said, 2019, we have a very young and enterprising team right now in the Super Eagles. We have the young, one of the youngest national teams in the world right now. And every day we have causes to smile. Look at Akar Boise in Villarreal. Today, Atletico Madrid wants him for about $40 million. We are players that are doing, all of them are doing very well. They're young, they're enterprising. And it's not just a team for the Nations Cup. It's a team for the, two, for the next two years, next four years, next eight years. So that's what we've been able to build. And we are still in the process. Look at Victor Simon doing very well in his club. All these are the boys that came through our ranks. Then the other ones, they are still there. Then the experienced players are still there. So it's an admixture of the old, young, and very enterprising players. So we believe in, 19, in um, 2019, we're going to do very well. We, we, we want to keep the momentum. We are, um, yesterday, the draws for the under-17 final qualifying phase uh, was made. And um, we were in a very good group. And we believe we'll come out of that group and qualify for the World Cup, for the under-17 World Cup, which we have won the record five times. And um, the beauty about going to that World Cup is not just going there to win again. We have a very young team. We have a truly under-17 team. When we didn't qualify the last time, people came. They said all kinds of things. But within ourselves, and especially the chairman of the youth committee, Shea Kingumi, who is very resolute, I cannot even tell him. 
If he sees a player that is not 17, he will follow him to his own and make sure that you wouldn't want it. And besides, we are connected to what's called the FIFA Connect program, whereby we are trying to register all our players and all football stakeholders. Once you are in that platform, you cannot doctor your age, you cannot change your name, it goes through a process. And we monitor you. So we've gone very technology, and we are not technologically advanced in terms of monitoring players. And uh, we are doing all these things because we believe we have an abundance of skill in this country. Abundance of skill. How do you harness them for societal development? How do you harness them for the future? Those are the areas we are doing. And that's why we call on public spirited Nigerians, the world in Nigerians, they should come and support us. I mean, it's not just, and like I said, support doesn't mean give the money to NFF. No. When Aliko decided to say, okay, they want to give, they called me and said, oh, I spoke with Aliko. I said, no, Alaji, don't give us this money for the girls. I will send you the account details of all the girls. It will be good for them to see money from oh, Dangote wow. straight to them. Mm -hmm. He was shocked. And I mean, the same thing with Boa. So that's the level of transparency. We're not saying give us. Like what I2 is doing for Nigerian football is unprecedented. Now we have built six football houses, secretariat. We are starting by next week, we are doing seven in seven states. Kassina, um, I think Kassina, Zanfara, we are, going, we are doing Edo, a couple of states. We are, when I mean football houses, secretariat for the state FAs. In the next two years, we are going to have 36 in all the states. Why are we doing that? Taking football to the grassroots, not just football, football administration to the grassroots. And that's when you have the FIFA Connect program. And this is done by O. It's part of the legacy project of ITO, our ultimate partner. You know, if you sell something good to them, they'll come back to you. And it's a company that is not, all our companies, Nigerian Breweries, Coca-Cola, Zenith Bank, TGI, that's the Wacot grass, rice, everybody's eating Wacot rice in December. You know, all our companies. So we believe that maybe this day can come as our official newspaper, or our rice can come as our official TV. You know, we are very proud of you, but why don't you come and give us something? No, 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 we, we, it's, it's something really, it's something that we know we can really Great. do again, again, and again. And uh, we just want to create the indulgence of Nigerians. It's a journey that is quite tortuous, but together we can do it. In the course of it, we offend people who say sorry. There's no big deal saying sorry, sorry if you feel hot. But join us in rewriting so many wrongs about Nigerian football. And as our president, Amadou Penigme, thanks for joining us well, on the show this morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, it's now time for a short break. When we come back, it will be all about theater with Ifoma Fafunwa. Please stay with us. <laughs> 